एवरीवन वेलकम टू द अपडेट ऑफ ट्वेंटी एट मे अ कम्प्लीटली रेड डे इफ यू आर ट्रैकिंग द मार्केट वेरी क्लोजली आई एक्चुअली फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग डेटा पॉइंट चाइनाज एक्सटर्नल ट्रेड आर अप्रॉक्सिमेटली नाउ फिफ्टी परसेंट डन इन देअर लोकल करेंसी विच इज आर एम बी नॉट इन यू एस डॉलर देर हैज बीन अ डिबेट गोइंग ऑन फॉर मोर देन अ डिकेड नाउ मे बी समे चाइनाज आर एम बी मे डी थ्रोन यू एस डॉलर इन टर्म्स ऑफ चाइनाज करेंसी दिस इज डन फिफ्टी परसेंट नाउ इन ग्लोबल कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ कोर्स इज अ लॉन्ग वे टू गो बट थिंग्स लाइक दिस डिटोरिएट वेरी फास्ट टूवर्ड्स द एंड यू एस गवर्नमेंट मे बी वॉचिंग दिस डेटा वेरी वेरी क्लोजली नाउ इनफैक्ट चाइना इज सो कॉन्फिडेंट दैट दे हैव बीन सेलिंग यू एस डॉलर डंपिंग यू एस ट्रेजरीज एंड बाइंग गोल्ड इन स्टेड आई एम यूजिंग टू स्लाइड्स फ्रॉम द वीडियो दैट आई एम गॉन रिलीज इन अबाउट टू थ्री आवर्स टाइम दिस इज द वोलेटिलिटी ऑफ निफ्टी इन लास्ट टू डेज ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड ऑन द टॉप साइड ट्वेंटी टू एट फिफ्टी ऑन द बॉटम साइड दिस इज हार्डली टू फिफ्टी पॉइंट्स हाउ एवर लुक एट द अप्स एंड डाउन्स दिस इज वोलेटाइल इफ यू आर ट्रेडिंग very difficult to decide whether you want to go long or short at what levels you book the profits or losses the graph i showed in the previous slide was just this portion this entire length is approximately one quarter so if we are going to fall from here you can very well imagine how steep that fall may be just to reach the levels we were in on 18th of march If you have taken fresh positions in this zone, you should be really scared. Maybe think of sitting on cash or booking some profits. I've been sharing the correlation between Reliance and Nifty for some time now. Today I was short on Nifty, so I'm just sharing my day layout how I was trading. This was Nifty's graph. This was live Reliance. This was my sensible window where my trades were running. Effectively, this setup of two monitors is helping me track a lot of data. while the third monitor is helping me with my active work what a contrast only one stock in green that 2.1% we are at an all time high us markets are also at an all time high only one stock red nifty had a choppy day up down up and down but the overall trend was low only for wix i am showing the years graph look at where it was few days back it is at an years high look at the rapid rise in volatility this is truly an election graph for wix nifty down bank nifty down nifty it down gold down brent down bitcoin down silver marginally up nifty energy down there is no point in talking about snp and nasdaq right now look at the support dii's have to provide to the market so they don't crash ahead of the last two polling phases last phase is on 1st of june i am very if dis will support the market after 1st june when there is large scale selling there are two things in fact which are about to happen in the last few days of this month which is remaining 3 days dis may run out of money because new money will come in next month only fis know that dis mandate is perhaps 1st of june they will get fresh money after 1st or 2nd june only election results are on 4th of june there are still few trading days left 3rd of june monday is a full trading day 4th of june the results will start coming in from the morning this fix is going to shoot i'll need a bigger screen to capture this graph some key news adani enterprise adani energies the board has approved raising 3.5 billion dollars this is kind of a good news because 3.5 billion dollars will come into the country as a part of this fund raise as of now to stabilize the currency any incoming dollars is good however most of this is an iou to support this 3.5 billion dollars eventually about 4 4.5 billion dollars will go out of the country also adani enterprises and adani energy are experts at raising low cost debt i have analyzed their balance sheets their debt is typically around 5% or even low at times in fact despite their huge debt their interest coverage ratios are among the best in the industry that is why they are able to continuously raise money with ease India and France are negotiating for a new deal for fifty thousand crores. Rafales again. This time it is marine jets. So some of the shipping companies, even HAL, they could be a beneficiary if there is an agreement to build some part of it in India as a part of Make in India. Look at this headline news: election and FNOQs. Investors cautiously bullish. 
amid expectations of a BJP plus mandate. Now look at these numbers. The only thing I'm trying to say is next few days, don't watch news channels. As an investor or trader, you'll get terribly confused and you might end up taking the wrong decision because all these channels have a vested interest in showing certain parties in a certain color. Traders and investors should be away from politics. They should be able to read politics, but don't make favorites. Divi's Lab was the stock of the day today, 3% up. Look at the chart of Divi's Lab. Pharma is a defensive sector. In uncertain times, Pharma goes up a lot. Most of these stocks are looking pretty. Defensives go up or at least fall little. If markets crack, I've just updated a dashboard. My apologies. It was not updated to reflect today. This is the updated dashboard. Sector snapshot, aerospace and defense went through a correction today. It may get into severe corrections over the next week or two if the market's correct. Automobiles are top two players corrected significantly, Maruti and Tata. Banking fell severely towards the end. It was holding Nifty together for a significant time. Coal India continues to correct. It has been down for three out of last four days. Construction and engineering, again, huge corrections. LNT was up a little. This sector has run up significantly and there is a lot of froth. Electrical utilities, the entire power pack was down 2%. Tata Technologies, all the shareholders whose shares were locked for six months, they got their stocks today. Even I got mine today. So there was perhaps a lot of selling. People wanted to move out. As a result, the stock was down 2.3%. The big boys, Siemens, ABB, BHEL, all corrected anywhere between 1 and 3%. Tata Steel ahead of its results tomorrow was down 0.3%. I expect the results to be better for Tata Steel than JSW for the simple reason that Tata Steel manufactures a lot of high-end steel that is used in the auto industry and consumed by its own companies, namely Tata Motors as well as JLR in UK. So Tata Chorus supplies a lot of steel to auto as well. This is high quality, expensive steel and a lot of demand comes from the sister companies. And Tata Steel has reduced a lot of debt also in the last one or two years. So I expect Tata Steel to have similar challenges as JSW, but do a little better than JSW. Oil and gas was bleeding 1% down, led by Reliance 0.7%. Reliance in fact didn't even attempt a single recovery in the day, just kept going down. Pharma, I mentioned about the defensive part of Pharma. It was up half a percent. Nifty, 29 stocks down, 21 up. Divis was up. Life insurance companies were up. Grassim up. Hero, Dr. Reddy again, Pharma. So the stocks which were actually not doing well for last 7-8 days, they went up today. Wipro also. Adani ports down. Power Grid, BPCL, Coal, Adani Enterprises, ONGC, NTPC, Tata Motors, Tech Mahindra. Significant cuts, volumes were not very high for the companies that were falling. However, for the companies that went up, the volumes were pretty good. Nifty next 50, 34 down, 16 up. HL down most, again 2.4%. The volumes of the companies that went down were not very high. The companies that went up, United Spirits, Muthut Finance, the volumes were pretty good. IT index I already covered, HCL Wipro, LNT Technologies up. The complete energy pack was bleeding more than 1% cut in most stocks. Reliance was down 0.7%. Banks, HDFC was up very little, but the overall sector went through a correction. Not a single stock in green in the public sector banks. Indian Overseas Bank, which was up 11% yesterday, went down 5% today. My portfolio had no action today. I didn't trade at all in the cash segment. I was working on the next video, which I'm going to release in the next few hours. And most of my focus was on the FNO trades. Let me take you there. So I left yesterday with this figure around three or 4,000 in loss. Today, despite a decay of around 30,000 at portfolio level, which means if I was not doing anything and if the market didn't do anything, I'll still lose 30,000. The position is in a profit of 8,500, which means 30 plus 8 plus 4 from yesterday. So about 42,000 gains in terms of strategy. Yes, the portfolio reflects 8,500 only because most of this money was eaten by decay. For election specifically, I have taken a new position. 10 lots. Let me walk you through the approach. So we are here. If the market continues this particular trend, then I'll be in profit. If the markets go up, 
then I will be at a loss. The potential upside is 23,725. The potential downside is 26,275. But the probability of but the probability of profit is already 52%. And my conviction is that markets will go down. This is 6th of June series. 10 lots each. Noted I am an option seller here. So I will be collecting premium. The max profit 26,000. Max loss 23,000. What I will do with my original position. This is 32 lots. I exited another 32 lots at 329. I didn't want to wait for the morning. Because morning markets may open significantly up 100 points up also in that case it would be really bad for the portfolio so i sold off half the positions at 329 remaining positions only two days remaining for the expiry including the expiry day so there'll be too much of decay so i'll not keep the positions open for long if the markets crack a bit around 22 800 maybe there will be a profit of around 15 16 thousand I'll square off the position and move out. If you are feeling jittery right now, don't worry, you are not alone. That's the position of most folks. In fact, most of the experienced people also are very, very nervous right now because markets this time are really, really being run by large players a lot more than they have ever been. As a result, fundamentals, technicals, expert views don't mean anything. You have to play like a chess player like I mentioned earlier. You have to think how the bigger players are going to play. Right now, for example, everyone feels that on 4th of June, markets will open with a bank, go up significantly and then fall. If that's going to happen, then nearly everyone will make money. It's not that easy to make money. So you have to be open for all options. Don't go with a very, very specific conviction. Once you take a conviction, you are sure about something. Unless any philosophy goes wrong, don't change your trade. Have some patience, have some money to add or average lower. The movements right now are designed to choke small people and make them exit with losses. Don't fall into that pressure. Thanks for watching. There's a new video coming up today. Do watch it if you want a different perspective into how you could trade and have a good night's sleep. I will see you tomorrow.